A grieving mother hesitantly sells her baby's crib after suffering from a miscarriage. However, the day after she sells it, the buyer returns to her house with an unexpected surprise. Before we continue, please take some time to subscribe to Daily Dose, like, and share this video with your friends. It might brighten their day and inspire them to do good. Also keep watching because an important lesson awaits at the end of the video. Grace had always dreamed of becoming a mother. While her friends and colleagues mostly focused on climbing up the career ladder, she had no interest in this and simply wanted to live a simple life with the family she'd build with her spouse. When she discovered she was pregnant, she and her husband George excitedly started shopping for the baby's nursery. They made sure everything was fit for their coming bundle of joy. They painted the room themselves, bought the best baby items, and chose the most special wooden crib for the baby. While George was busy working during the day, Grace put her heart and soul into arranging and decorating her baby's room. She wanted everything to look straight out of a magazine, so she splurged on her baby's crib and matching hotel standard linens. Unfortunately for Grace, one day, she woke up in excruciating pain. She thought she was going through preterm labor, so she and George rushed to the hospital, where she was immediately brought to the neonatal intensive care unit. What's happening, doctor? I'm only two, three weeks pregnant. I can't possibly be giving birth, can I? She cried, still in pain. A part of her already knew what was happening, but she didn't want to admit it to herself. The doctor had a worried look on her face, as if she was about to say something terrible. When it was finally clear that Grace was indeed miscarrying, they slowly broke the sad news to her and George. There was complete silence in the room when the doctor told them of the situation. After a couple of seconds, a loud scream came from Grace as the news finally started to sink in. No, she cried. It can't be. Why? Why is this happening? I'm sure you can still do something about it, doctor. Please, do everything you can to save my baby. Grace tried to stand up from the hospital bed as George, also in tears, attempted to restrain her and stop her from moving too much. I'm sorry, Grace. There's nothing I can do. The doctor apologized. That night, Grace and George didn't sleep a wink. They cried their hearts out together, mourning the loss of their unborn child. Silence and despair filled the walls of their home for a long time. They could not bear entering their nursery and tried to avoid it as much as possible. Only after half a year did George and Grace decide to talk about what to do next. After their expenses piled up due to their trip to the hospital, George asked Grace if she was willing to sell some of the things they bought for the nursery. I understand you want to wait a while before we start trying to have a child again, George calmly told his wife. The things we bought might not be suitable for our baby by that time. What do you say we sell these first and buy new things for our little one again next time? He asked. Grace hesitated for a while. The nursery was something she put a lot of thought and effort into. Yet she also acknowledged that seeing it every day always broke her heart. Finally, she agreed to set up a garage sale for their baby items with one condition. She didn't want to sell the crib. After selling most of the items, however, a young man visited the yard sale and asked about the crib. By any chance, do you have a crib available for me to buy? I'm a bit short on cash, and everything at the mall is expensive, the man admitted. George looked at Grace, smiling at her encouragingly. He felt it was about time Grace let go of the crib, even if it was painful for her to do so. Meanwhile, the man realized Grace was having a hard time deciding whether or not to sell the crib. Does it have sentimental value? He asked. Grace nodded her head. The crib was the last thing I picked out for my child's nursery. I thought long and hard before buying one because I wanted it to be the perfect one, she explained. Wow, you're a very dedicated mom. How admirable, the man commended. Has your child outgrown the crib? Grace smiled sadly. Unfortunately, my child never got to lay on his crib. I suffered a miscarriage on my second trimester. The man's face dropped, and he started to turn pale. He realized he had been asking the wrong questions and was afraid he had offended Grace and George. I am so sorry, he told her. I didn't mean to be so rude. Don't worry about it, Grace assured the man. I'm willing to sell you the crib. Please, take care of it and I hope your baby likes it. 
the man introduced himself as James and went home with the new crib. He was excited to show it to his pregnant wife Lisa who also got emotional when James told her about Grace and George's sad story. I can't imagine going through what that poor woman had to endure. I hope she's all right, Lisa cried. I think she wanted to keep the crib, honey. Though it was a painful reminder of what could have been, Lisa told James. I don't feel comfortable keeping it. Maybe you can ask for a refund, she asked. James knew his wife was right, but he didn't want to ask for a refund. Instead, he decided to do something for George and Grace. When his wife fell asleep that night, he stayed up and worked in his garage. Before he knew it, the sun was up. Satisfied with what he was working on, he loaded it into the trunk of his car and told his wife he'd be right back. James went straight to George and Grace's house, where he surprised them with the visit. What brings you here, pal? George asked. Is anything wrong with the crib? James shook his head. No, but I have something for you. It just didn't feel right taking your crib knowing it meant a lot, especially to your wife, he said. Curious, George and Grace walked closer to James, where he was preparing to unlock the back of his car. When the trunk opened, Grace gasped. It turned out that James was a carpenter, so he was very good at building things. He disassembled the crib and was able to make a small crib for his unborn baby and a special bench with the wood salvaged from the crib. I know how painful it must have been to see the crib every day, James told the couple. I wanted to create something out of it so you can be reminded of your little angel daily, he explained. Grace was in tears. She never expected the kind gesture from a stranger. Thank you, she cried. Now I have a piece of my son with me every day, without having to see the empty crib. I can now enjoy his memory in peace.